everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's story time at Mount Gilead Library. My name is Miss Jillian, and this is my first time that I've ever done story time. So I'm so excited to be reading these books to you guys, and I hope you enjoy them. So I've been thinking, tomorrow is Thanksgiving, and I don't really know anything about Thanksgiving, and I really just want to learn. So I was looking in the shelves, and I found this book. It's called Thanksgiving by David F. Marks. And it talks all about what Thanksgiving is all about. And so I wanted to share that with you guys. So Thanksgiving. Do you celebrate Thanksgiving? I do. In the United States, people celebrate Thanksgiving on the fourth Thursday of November, which is tomorrow. I'm so excited. In Canada, Thanksgiving is on the second Monday in October. For many years in many lands, people have had holidays to give thanks for a good harvest, kind of like we do around here. In Mount Gilead, we do a lot of farming. A harvest is when farmers go to their fields and collect all the food they have grown. Harvest holidays took place way back in ancient times in Greece, Rome, Egypt, and China. Whoa, that's all the way around the world. In America, the big harvest holiday is Thanksgiving. The first American Thanksgiving was celebrated in 1621. It's 2020 now, so if you look back, 1621 was so long ago, and we're still celebrating Thanksgiving now. Isn't that crazy? In the 1600s, people started coming to America from Europe, a land across the Atlantic Ocean. The first group of newcomers was called the Pilgrims. The Pilgrims built small towns and planted farms. Native Americans already lived there. They helped the Pilgrims grow new food. The Pilgrims invited Native Americans to the first Thanksgiving. Today, nobody really knows if turkey was eaten at the first American Thanksgiving, but we do know the meal included deer, oysters, boiled pumpkin, corn, and cranberries. I don't know about you, but I've never had boiled oysters at my Thanksgiving. Do you have a big turkey dinner on Thanksgiving? Today, almost everyone eats turkey on this holiday. Some people call it Turkey Day. What other foods do you eat th at Thanksgiving? Sweet potatoes? Stuffing? Pumpkin pie? Every family has its own favorite Thanksgiving food. Mine is definitely stuffing. What else do you do on Thanksgiving? Well, some kids like to watch the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade from New York City. Some people spend their Thanksgiving helping others who are poor or sick. This helps everyone feel better. And we need a lot of that now because of the coronavirus, huh? If you have a helping heart, you'll be able to help a lot of people just by wanting to help. Thanksgiving is about more than a big meal. It's a chance to think about what good is in our lives. These are the things we can be thankful for. When Thanksgiving comes this year, what will you be thankful for? Well, I can tell you a few things that I'm thankful for. I'm definitely thankful for my family, and the library, and story time. Are you thankful for story time? I definitely am. So now, you might be sitting there and thinking, I know that I want to be thankful for something, but what's an example of something that I can be thankful for? Well, we're going to take a look at the squirrels' Thanksgiving and see how hard it was for them to find things to be thankful for also. This book is by Stephen Kroll and illustrated by Jenny Bassett. The night before Thanksgiving, Mama and Papa Squirrel and their two children, Brenda and Buddy, were relaxing in front of the fire. You know, Mama said, Thanksgiving is such a lovely holiday. We have so much to be thankful for. Papa was rocking in his rocking chair. It's true, he said. We have our friends in our home, and of course, we have our family. Brenda and Buddy stopped shelling nuts. Brenda glared at Buddy. 
That afternoon, when they'd been counting acorns for Thanksgiving, Buddy had knocked Brenda's off the table. He had also gotten glue on Brenda's fur while they were making pilgrim placemats for the table. Brenda wasn't thankful for Buddy at all. Buddy glared at Brenda. Earlier that day, they'd been gathering nuts for Mama's nut bread. Brenda had lagged behind and dropped her nuts all over the ground. She also had put big marshmallows on the sweet potatoes when he had wanted little ones. Buddy wasn't thankful for Brenda at all. Well, children, said Papa, it's time for bed. I hope that tomorrow you will show how thankful you are for one another. And, said Mama, you should be thankful for your Aunt Nellie and Uncle Herb and your cousins, Penny and Chuck. They're coming for Thanksgiving dinner. That night, Brenda tossed and turned, wondering how she could show she was thankful for her brother and her relatives that she didn't know. Buddy, of course, wondered the same thing. The next morning, Buddy and Brenda bumped into each other in front of the bathroom. Please, said Buddy, opening the door, you first. Brenda couldn't believe what she had heard. Buddy always ran into the bathroom before she did, and she spent an extra long time brushing her teeth. Then she went down to breakfast and poured Buddy a bowl of cereal. Thank you, said Buddy. When the family went out to the car to go to church, Brenda jumped into the place Buddy had been promised in the front seat. Buddy was about to say something mean. Then he remembered it was Thanksgiving. I hope you'll enjoy your ride, he said to Brenda, and slunk into the back. Wow, they're really helping each other, huh? Buddy and Brenda were behaving so politely that Mama and Papa Squirrel were smiling happily when they reached the church. They all marched up the aisle to the front pew and waited for the service to begin. They had to wait a long time. Buddy and Brenda began to get restless. Buddy leaned over and started making gargling noises at Brenda. Brenda made gargling noises back. Shh, cried Mama. Both of you, stop it. Buddy and Brenda settled down, but the service still didn't begin. Buddy leaned over and pinched Brenda on her leg. Ow, she said. She pinched Buddy back. Ouch, he screeched. All right, said Papa Squirrel. Enough's enough. Remember what Mama and I told you about being thankful. When the service began, Buddy and Brenda tried to remember the good things about each other. They were quiet and they behaved. After church, they all piled into the car and drove home. Aunt Nellie and Uncle Herb and the cousins Penny and Chuck were waiting at the hollow tree. Happy Thanksgiving, said Papa Squirrel. We're so glad to see you, said Mama Squirrel. Brenda and Buddy smiled at their cousins. Do you want to come and see our toys? they asked. Penny and Chuck didn't answer. Instead, Benny stepped hard on Buddy's toe. Chuck gave Brenda an elbow in the ribs. Ow, said Buddy. Cut it out, said Brenda. Mama and Papa glared. Buddy and Brenda looked at one another. How could they be thankful for their cousins? They were mean. Well, said Mama Squirrel, it's time to eat now. Let's all go inside. A big bowl of nuts and acorns was in front of each place. They, there were serving dishes filled with cranberries and squash and sweet potatoes topped with big marshmallows. In the middle was a loaf of golden brown bread Mama Squirrel had baked that morning. Let's join hands before we begin, said Papa Squirrel. Penny put her hand behind her back. I won't hold hands with Chuck, she said. I won't hold hands with Penny either, said Chuck. Brenda grabbed Chuck's hand and Buddy grabbed Penny's hand. Papa said grace and the meal began. Buddy dug into a thick slice of nut bread. He began eating a squash, and suddenly, Penny dumped a paw full of nuts down his back. Hey, said Buddy, stop it. Now, Penny, said Uncle Herb, that is not the way to enjoy Thanksgiving dinner. You might prefer eating it instead. Penny paid no attention. She turned and dumped some acorns down Chuck's back. Chuck pulled her tail. Then he pulled Brenda's tail, too. Ow, said Brenda, that hurt. Chuck jumped up and knocked over a pitcher of cider. This has gone far enough, said Papa, mopping cider out of his lap. Yuck, said Brenda. Our cousins are really awful. They're much worse than we've ever been, said Buddy. I think we'd better leave, said Aunt Nellie. We'll come back when our children can behave. We'll call you later. After they had all left, Mom and Papa Squirrel sat down once more with Buddy and Brenda. Whew, what a relief, said Mama. 
Now we can endure our Thanksgiving in peace, said Papa. At least I hope we can, said Mama, looking at Brenda and Buddy. I guess I do have a lot to be thankful for, said Brenda. Buddy's really not so bad. At least we can do things together, said Buddy. We can shell nuts and count acorns and make placemats. Let's have another blessing, said Papa Squirrel. They took each other's hands. Thanks for this good food and our good family, said Papa. Thanks for Buddy, said Brenda, and thanks for Brenda, said Buddy. And they all ate their delicious Thanksgiving dinner. So, at first, Buddy and Brenda really didn't like each other, did they? But they realized that Thanksgiving is all about being thankful for your family and thankful for the people that you have in your life. And so, I hope we can all be a little bit like Buddy and Brenda this year, being able to be thankful for our moms and dads who work so hard for us and our siblings who love us too, even if they might get on our nerves a little bit. I'm, I'm really like this book. So, also, November is wrapping up, and we are having Dinovember um, this month at the library, and this is the last Wednesday of November, and so I wanted to read this book just to wrap up Dinovember a little bit. It's really fun. It's called Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Willems. Once upon a time, there were dinosaurs, Papa, Mama Dinosaur, and other dinosaur, who happened to be visiting from Norway. Home sweet dinosaur home. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Oh boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It's finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. Ha ha ha. Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens by our unclosed home while we are, uh, someplace else. Oh boy, they're kind of, they're kind of skeevy. Then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big, evil laugh but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. Ha 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 ha! The three dinosaurs went someplace else and were definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. Just then, the forest boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure that was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that sounded kind of like, Be patient, Papa Dinosaur! The trap is not yet strung. But that could have been a rock falling, or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Welcome, ha ha ha. Inside, Goldilocks immediately spilled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. Then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there and certainly wasn't left on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all the way anyways because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? <clears throat> the second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Definitely not her. The third bowl of chocolate pudding was just right. But Goldilocks was on such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. Soon, Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed the three chairs in the living room. So, she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. But the third chair, 
was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair, so she hiked over to the bedroom. When she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were so gigantically big. What is going on around here? groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. They're not bears, are they? But she doesn't know that yet. Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. A few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious, chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier than when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Goldilocks took a minute to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran back to the door and got out of there. Just then, a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now! Or charge! Or Norwegian expression for chewy bonbon time! Suddenly, and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three disappointed dinosaurs. The end. And the moral is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. And there she is, with the three bears. And the moral for dinosaurs is, lock the back door. The end. Thank you so much for joining me for story time today. I had so much fun. I hope you did too. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving with anybody who you're able to um, celebrate it with. And I hope you love this book to wrap up Die November. Bye!